shifting me a new paradigm. Oh my God, come on here. A new fresh paradigm. Yes. And that's where we're going to be talking today. Again, we are dealing with getting Holy Spirit moving into the upper room, moving into a fresh progressive revelation of Holy Spirit, fresh progressive revelation. I need you to write that in uh, the chat. Progressive revelation, progressive revelation. I want to continue as we are talking about mentors and mantles and how God shifts us, shifts our thinking through the encounters of people that come in our space, sometimes for a lifetime, sometimes for a season, sometimes uh, just for an elevator ride. Uh, but God, Anna, he wants us to be upgraded and he wants us to be up to date in our revelation. Hallelujah. So the purpose of Holy Spirit is to illuminate our minds, to see things we've never understood before. Now, Holy Spirit can suddenly illuminate your mind to see and to understand what you have never seen or understood before. That is Holy Spirit's responsibility. Thank you for your seeds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Progressive. Thank you, DJ. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, Matt Maliante, Pastor Willa Dean. Thank you all so much. Progressive revelation. Holy Spirit can suddenly illuminate our minds to see things never understood before enabling us to respond differently. Thank you, Mother Pearl. <laughs> she said, all this good teaching, you cannot get it for $5 anywhere. Absolutely. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you for your seeds. Put your seeds in the ground and let me know when it's done. Thank you, Pastor William Lamont. Thank you, Lois McRae. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Progressive revelation. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Evangelist Akiva. So, I got to keep up with you. <laughs> Holy Spirit can, can illuminate our minds and suddenly cause us to see what we've never seen before. So the baptism of Holy Spirit or what we call spirit baptism is so much more than speaking in tongues is so much more than clapping of the hands. It is an entire paradigm shift. It's a paradigm shift. <laughs> it's a paradigm shift. It shifts you. Glory to God, Sister Thea, absolutely. It shifts you. And the beautiful thing that I love about Holy Spirit is that Holy Spirit doesn't just speak to us about church stuff, or about the Bible. That Holy Spirit shifts us in a moment, illuminates our minds, no matter what space we're in, whether you're at the boardroom table, at the at the committee table, or you're at the in the in the uh, uh, operating room, you're in the urgent care. You're in medicine, you're in government, you're in education, in a classroom. You have a child that's on a spectrum. Uh, you have a special needs child, but you're a Holy Spirit field counselor, therapist, or educator, Holy Spirit field administrator. And the IEP isn't working and the parent is discombobulated, but you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And in that moment, in that moment, Holy Spirit can suddenly illuminate your minds so that you are enabled to respond differently. So Holy Spirit, glory to God, 
helps you regulate your day. Yes, brother Booker. Yes, yes, yes. Helps you to helps you to uh, to to see your day differently. To see through the lenses. Good morning, tribe man. Good morning. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, Holy Spirit is our advantage. We never have to live, glory to God, without present truth. We never have to live in outdated truth. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy Spirit illuminates our minds. Woo, is that you, Suzette? Look at that. You are a spirit-filled therapist. My God, in the name of Jesus. Your protocols your clinical applications be enriched and enlarged by the power of Holy Spirit beginning right now. That God will make you the exception to the rule. In Jesus' name, receive that. To all of you that are in that particular area, Holy Spirit will make you the exception to the rule. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit illuminates us wherever we are, illuminates us, whether it's in the grocery store or whether it's outside uh, uh, in the park. Uh, Holy Spirit illuminates us suddenly. And while we are spirit filled, we have to move in present truth. We must move in present truth. We cannot live in antiquated truth. And it's 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 a difficult shift. Uh I know it. It's a difficult shift. It's it's a it because it's what you've always known. It's how you've always thought about something. It's how you've always seen something. Pastor Valerie Thomas is how you've always experienced something. But yet at the same time, you realize that you might be outdated, even though it's comfortable, even though it is exactly what you are familiar with, but it does not mean that it is present truth. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, the one thing that I love about Holy Spirit the era of Holy Spirit is always now, always now. The era of Holy Spirit is now, now, now. It's always present. It's always present. It's never past. It's always present. So Holy Spirit is always ahead, always so far ahead of us to keep us moving, to keep us progressing, to keep us growing, to keep us thinking outside of the box. Praise God. To keep us moving, to keep us in a in 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 line in alignment with the most current thought of God. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Holy Spirit will speak in your heart. He will illuminate your mind no matter where you are. Holy Spirit will do it. Now, watch this. When we think about our past teachings, when we think about what we thought, or what we believed, or what we were taught, we realize that it can be a stumbling block. It can be a stumbling block to you. And you not even know it. Holy Spirit is always relevant and current. Absolutely. Uh, and so you may not even know it. So it may be comfortable, come on, but it is outdated. Now, here's that. Revelation is a surprising and previously unknown fact, especially one that is made known in a dramatic way. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Whoa, somebody need to write that down. We're going we're gonna to hit that some more. Revelation is a surprising and previously unknown, and I use the word reality, especially one that is made known 
in a dramatic way. That's revelation. And back in the day, <laughs> whoa, back in the day, uh, 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 we used to use the term revelation knowledge. Woo, shaka ba 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 shaka na na masia. Woo, re ba ba shika ta da ba sia. Re ko kashkete na na mashe. Re na da ba shia. It's outdated. It's it's comfortable, but it's outdated. Good God Almighty. Woo, Doctor Nick, it's comfortable, but it's outdated. It's comfortable, but it's outdated. I will say that again. It's comfortable, but it's outdated. I'm going to say it a couple more times. It's, it's comfortable, but it's outdated. I'm going to leave that up, Mother, so you all can write that down. I need you to write that. It's a previously unknown reality, especially one that is made known in a dramatic way, like boom, revelation knowledge, or someone walks into your space and gives you information or engages you in a conversation in a in an extraordinary way just boom by the spirit of god that's that's a mantle that falls a divine supernatural disclosure to humans of something relating beyond beyond something relating to the existence of the world to your particular mountain to wherever you are in that moment, it's a supernatural disclosure. It's a supernatural disclosure. Barbara says, Holy Spirit stirs the pot. It's comfortable, but it's outdated. It's comfortable, but it's outdated. It's comfortable, come on now, but it is outdated. I'm going to say that again. It's comfortable, but it is out. One more time. It's a comfortable shoe, but the shoe is raggedy. It's a comfortable shoe. But when you wear it, you're scared it's going to fall apart because it is comfortable, but it is no longer truth for today. And so Holy Spirit, glory, glory to God, previously no unknown reality. Yes, it's comfortable, but it's outdated. Uh, my, my sister and I have done the worship ministry at our church forever. And I remember uh, I, I started our worship team at our home, at my house, on the landing. That's where I had my organ and piano. And I said, we need a worship team. We would sit on the stairs. And then we would come to the house. And so we started it. But as I, as I grow in the spirit, I always pull my worship team with me. Because I, as a, as a, as a, as a pastor, as the voice in the house, I always need my worship team up to date with me. And so whenever I sense I'm shifting, I shift my worship team. Whenever I sense a shift in my revelation, I share it first with my sister and my minister of music, my, my shift. I'm shifting. And so I need you to shift. I'm shifting. <laughs> Denise say, a seminary I was taught, if it's new, it's not true. That's a lie. They lied to us in seminary. They don't know no better. Forgive them. <laughs> it's a lie. So as I shift, I shift my worship team. Because as I shift, I need my worship team, my Levites, to shift with me. All right? And so when, when y'all hear my birds singing in the background, they listen to the school of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so as I move forward in my revelation, I am always, always mindful of shifting my 
worship team. Dr. Brown, you hear me? Y'all pastors, y'all hear me? Because you can be in one place and your worship team is in a totally different place. <laughs> My sister said, don't call it vintage. It's outdated. And so as I'm shifting in my walk with Holy Spirit, my revelation of the text, I shift my worship team. So a few months back, I, I reached out to them and I said, okay, I'm shifting and I need you all to shift. And so I said, I want you to start listening to Maverick City. I want you to start listening um, to Phil Wickham. I want you to start listening to um, other people that uh, uh, casting crowns. I want you to, I want to come out of the black gospel genre because that's not where I am and come over to worship, come over to the music that fits the revelation that I'm going to be sharing. Now, it doesn't mean that they are not good. They're excellent, one of the best, but I need them to shift. Now, there's always going to be shifting. There's always going to be shifting. And I was, I, I don't know, I don't go to the rehearsals unless I need to have a meeting with them or to shift them. And when I come in, I'm shifting. I'm always shifting. I'm always shifting because I need them to align. So Maverick City, uh, Phil Wickham and some of the other artists that are not our skin. I need you all to start listening to them. <clears throat> I need you to start listening to Casting Crowns. I need you to start listening to other voices, other sounds. Now, I did it years ago when Darling Zach and Hillsong was new. Alvin Slaughter and others who people had never heard of. Paul Lanier, music that people weren't singing because you listen to gospel music on radio. They only play about 20 artists. That's all they play, the same 20. They go all, you're always going to get Kirk Carr. You're always going to get Yolanda Adams. You're always going to, and there's nothing wrong, but that's not where I am. You're always going to get Marvin Sapp. You're always going to get, you're going to get, and it's good. Listen to it. But I'm shifting the house because Holy Spirit is shifting me. And I need my worship team to shift with me. Come on, Suzette, my God. All right, so it's comfortable, but it's outdated. I need a new sound. I need new music. I need a fresh, a refreshing. So that's longer rehearsals. That's learning new music. That's, it's all of that. But I need you to shift because I've shifted. Now, I don't know what kind of backlash my sister got because I don't get into that. I just give the instruction. And for 30 years, we've done this together. 36 years I've been pastoring that church. And we shift. But there's always somebody. There's always going to be a couple of folks that ain't going to like it. I don't like that. I don't want to sing no song. I, I think that's for young people. I think that's for this. I think that they white. There's always going to be that voice. Because progressive revelation makes some people uncomfortable. Y'all not saying that. Woo! I shake it by. This is why over a period of time, there have been different movements. So there was the Reformation. There, there was a, a progressive revelation in the Reformation. But then progressive revelation continues. Glory to God. And so when progressive revelation continues, you have to keep moving. So now we are all the way from, from uh, the Reformation. Uh, we went into the Protestant movement. Then we went into the Wesleyan movement. And then we went into the holiness movement. And then we went into the Pentecostal movement. 
Then we moved into the charismatic movement. Then we moved into the latter rain movement. And now we, we went into the that that whole space now where we are is, is, is we're calling it the third Pentecost. So why? Because Holy Spirit, Ho Holy Spirit continues to move us. And if you don't move, glory to God. Woo shakaba re kocho koto bashia. Woo ba 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 bashika. Ah, da, I hear you, Tamara. This sound is current and speaking to a large, diverse body. This move, you, it's it's a sudden revelation. Woo! And, and so, even if you don't want to go, we have to keep moving. And, and you you'll either you'll either tap out, or you or you push forward. Okay. And, and so I get it. I get you, you like singing those songs, but that's not where I am. And I don't need a worship team if it's not where I am. You need to understand that. When I shift, you shift. See? How many of you understand what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't take the worship team lightly. Choirs, you know, I, I don't fool around with the choir, you know, and coming back from pandemic, we don't yet have a choir. But I do have that worship team, Shaka. And so we have to keep, we, we have to move, folks. We have to move. Before it was Hillsong. Hillsong was, was Casting Crowns is now that group. If you all don't know Casting Crowns, Google them. And so there's certain sounds that you have to hear as a leader that lets you know that signals that there is a shift in truth. There's a shift in truth. That there's a shift that is happening in the atmosphere that you have got to hear. And if you don't want to go, I'm sorry, <laughs> but we're shifting. I got to shift the sound. Because I'm shifting. And as the chief Levite of the house, I need the Levites to go with me. Now, I've never had a problem. Thank God, because uh, my sister, my worship team, I, my, my minstrels, I don't have a problem. But sometimes I have, to, I have to remind them, you have to keep up with me. I can't keep up with you. You got to keep up with me. Because I got to shift this house. I have to shift the people. Now, we've always been different. We've always been odd. Why? Because we were the exception. We were the exception to the rule of the Baptist church. <laughs> Woo. And so we put hymns in. Absolutely. Ah, <laughs> Come on, Vanita, what you saying to me? Our worship team does mostly contemporary Christian approach. Spring old school gospel. My sister's good at that. Standard hymns, absolutely. Hallelujah. And 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 thank God for you, like my sister, who is amazing in hearing music and learning music and teaching the music. But I'm saying to this, the house has its sound, and its sound must be fresh. It must be fresh. And so when I Say to Ruthie, I said, Ruthie, I'm changing. I'm shifting. But she know by now. <laughs> she perceives it before I do. And, 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 and I start sending the music. That means I'm shifting you. That means I'm shifting you. Why? Because revelation, glory to God, reveals what is the current mind of God. Revelation brings timing. Timing. Revelation locates time. What time is it? Glory to God. Whoa, come on, my pastor of worship, Sheila Donald Johnson. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I, hey, ha, Shanda. Yes, I feel God. Whoa, glory to God. Revelation. Revelation brings timing and wisdom to produce planning coordination and planning you you can't you can't have a 30 minute rehearsal 
now you, that's comfortable. You got to shift. You may have to stay for three hours. You may have to pick up three more days because now we're shifting. Now we've, we've got to, we've got to fuel. We've got to put new stuff in. We got to make new investments. The investment we were making is now outdated. Woo! Revelation locates time and it produces the wisdom, timing and wisdom so that you can coordinate and plan. Glory to God. Revelation reveals the what. What? What is God up to? That's what revelation does. Revelation reveals the what. But wisdom gives us the how. Revelation stirs things up. Revelation stirs things up. Revelation sees what's new. And wisdom teaches you how to marry it to what was. How to attach it. Why? Because we're working on the continuity of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. We're working on continuity. We're working on keeping things not copacetic, but we're keeping things in, in alignment with what God is doing now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we cannot get stuck in yesterday's sound. Yesterday's messages. God gives me some, some fresh eyes on texts that I've preached. I've been preaching for 48 years. So there's virtually nothing in the Bible I haven't preached. You understand? But Revelation takes you back to a familiar text but opens it up in a way you've never seen before. Glory to God. Now, you must navigate these, trans these transitions. You must navigate the transitions. You must navigate the transitions. And I want to say this. You must navigate the trans... This tran Let me say it without speaking in tongues. You must navigate the transitions without resistance. You must navigate transitions without resistance. And many of you are not comfortable with transition. You must keep up with the seasons of the Holy Spirit. Whether it's in worship, whether it's in preaching, whether it's in pastoring, leading, shepherding, whether it's in teaching in the public schools, charter schools, whatever it is, there's always new modalities. Most of my parents in the, in the public school system right now, they are upset because of the new math. Oh, they don't like it. They fuss about it and they, they go to YouTube about how it's old and it's, it's this and it's slow and, and, and I get it. I, I get it. But I said, I remember when I was in school and my mom and my dad had to make a transition. They called it the new math. It was a different way of doing it. And over the years in education, there are new creative ways of accomplishing the same way, the same answers, but going about it a different way. Why? Because the world is changing and they're giving them the skills giving our children the skills to work in the current workforce. Are you hearing me? And that's all Holy Spirit. <laughs> so we must stay up on, we must stay fresh. We must, we must stay up on all the new modalities. We must stay up. We must transition without resistance. Some of you are not good members. You're not kind to your shepherds. You're not kind to your leader. Because you resist transition and you fuss and you get fussy. All right. I said to my worship team, I want Maverick City is coming to Detroit. I want all of you to go. Now, I don't care if the ticket is a million dollars. I want all of you in that environment. I'm not playing. 
See, when it's shifting and you don't shift with me, then you become irrelevant. You become irrelevant. I was in the shower today and the host was speaking to me about some areas and I'm meeting with certain departments. I got to make some shifts because you don't want to stay updated. And it's not, a you're not a bad person, but you don't want to stay up to date. When you don't stay up to date with Holy Spirit, now you become a liability to the next move of God. Don't get stuck in yesterday. Don't get stuck in yesterday. Don't get stuck in a space where, but well, that's not the way we did it. And, that, and don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. When I first went into radio, we had reel to reels. Then it went to eight tracks. Then it went to cassettes. I got a whole third floor full of cassettes. Now we're trying to transition them to CDs. And by the time we got them all over the CDs, now it's M, 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 what is it? M3, 4, whatever, MP4. Things are moving, folks. And just as it's moving in technology, as it's moving in every area, it's also moving in, in the spirit. It's the move of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't, if you don't keep up, you're gonna die. You're gonna become antiquated. The only reason that you need to stay in the earth is that you're relevant. If you're not relevant, you can go to heaven. But if you stay relevant, if you stay up to date, I still got churches that still preaching, quote unquote, holiness. There's been five moves since then. I got some, I had one pastor, she was bent on teaching deliverance, deliverance, casting out devil, every service of deliverance, deliverance. And I said to her, I said, baby, this is outdated. We got to keep moving. We got to keep moving. My beloved mother in the Lord, Mother Estella Boyd. And my sweet sister, Gertrude Stacks, and my sweet brother, Elder Kid Kenneth Collins, in an era, in that, in their era, woo -wee! oh my God. But then the Holy Spirit, the wind moved. The wind shifted. And when the wind shifts, if you don't keep up with the wind, if you don't keep up with the wind, that wind will become a whirlwind to you and will blow you out. <laughs> Woo! You, listen, listen. <laughs> and now, <laughs> CDs, you, now you're doing download. Why? Because everything is shifting. Everything is shifting. And we think that shifts are optional. Not, no, no. You, 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 you don't understand it. It's not optional. Is anybody hearing me? Woo, glory to God. I need you to go to John chapter number three. John chapter number three. Glory to God. John chapter number three. Glory to God. Reba Bashikaba. Woo, glory to God. I hope you're hearing this because I'm telling you right now, this is Pentecost. <laughs> this is Pentecost. This is Pentecost. And if we're going to shift, you know, if we're going to shift, they, 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 we need the upper room. We, we need every year. We need to go to that upper room. We need to go to that upper room. Look at this in John chapter number three. And it's a familiar passage of scripture. But I, 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 I want you to look at it. And the Holy Spirit speaks freshly on old text. Speaks freshly on old text. Three and eight, three and eight, three and eight. Holy Spirit, thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo, glory to God. Uh, verse seven said, don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. Now, I don't have the time to break that down, and but I, I need, <laughs> go Shanice, run. Uh, I, I need you to uh, know that that has nothing to do with conversion. Born again. And John 3 has nothing to do with conversion. But I don't have time to unpack that. 
just just hold that we'll get to it that's a job three is about something totally different than you going to heaven so, totally different that you uh not going to hell born again is a total paradigm shift from being saved <laughs> Oh my God, watch this. But I don't have time to unpack it. So he says, uh, so don't, let me just start over to, with, with verse uh, chapter five. Jesus replied, I assure you that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and born of the spirit. This has nothing to do with blood. It's nothing to do with conversion or the taking away of sin. Humans can re reproduce only human life, but Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say to you, you must be born again. From Nigeria, Okora, God bless you, you're welcome. Look at it, look at this. You must be born again. Now, verse eight, the wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going. Good God Almighty. So you can't explain how people are born of the spirit. I, I, I have I have listened to people say you must be born again, you must be born again, you must be born again, and automatically make that a conversion experience. So the Romans 10, 9 and 10, when it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> this is not that. This is not what Jesus was talking about. This is not what Jesus was talking about in John 3. The conversation with Nicodemus was not about him being saved. It's not about him being saved from sin. This is not that conversation, folks. And it's so easy, again, comfortable, but outdated. It's so easy for us to just preach what we've been hearing and say what we've been saying because somebody else said it. But in this pericope, this is a different conversation like we say in the school board at a high level <laughs> Jesus is having a conversation with Nicodemus at a high level Paul talks to us about being saved but Jesus talks to us about being born of the spirit being born of the spirit being born again. It says, don't be surprised that I tell you, you have to be born from above, out of this world, so to speak. Good God Almighty, Charlotte. Whoa, you know well enough how the wind blows this way and that. You hear it rustling through the trees, but you have no idea where it comes from or even where it's headed next. And that is the way it is with everyone who is born again or born from above or born by the Spirit of God. Woo! You got to hear me. You got to hear this by the Spirit of God. Glory to God. This is a much higher level conversation. I was with uh, Young Church Sunday and I was sharing with their leaders I'm not going to ask you, are you saved? I want to know, are you born again? 
Can you keep up with the spirit? Are you born of the spirit? There's nothing about the blood of Christ in this text. There's nothing about the cross. There's nothing about grace here. This is not about whether or not you are saved or lost. This is a totally different conversation. Oh, you got to hear this. And we, we just sometimes as preachers and pastors, we don't take time to dig in the text. We don't take time to dig in the text. Listen to me and I'm going to say this. You very well may be saved, but you may not be born again. You might be saved from your sins, justification by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. But that's not what he was asking him. He was not asking him. And initially, listen to this, when Nicodemus heard it, he said, what do you mean? Verse four, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Oh, hallelujah. Woo. See, he, 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 he misunderstood the shift. He, he misunderstood the shift. So Jesus breaks it down and said, I'm telling you now, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. I'm talking about a high level, a paradigm shift. I'm talking about being able to see the kingdom, being able to per per perceive being able to grasp, being able to lay hope to it. But understand that it's constantly moving. That it's constantly moving. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. So the kingdom of God is constantly shifting, constantly moving. Like the wind, like the wind, like the wind. And those of you that are born of the spirit, you should be able to hear the wind. You should be able to feel it when it's moving. You should be able to make the shift. If you're born again, you don't fight freshness. You don't fight freshness. You don't fight the truth. You don't resist it. You're saved, but you're not born again. You are not listening, my God. You are not listening. I'm not telling you that you have to go back to your mother's womb. Let me say it again. The wind is hovering over the creation. That's the Holy Spirit. The invisible moving, the visible, my God. Baptism into a new life. The invisible moving, the visible. Oh my God, the invisible moving, the visible. I'm not telling you to go back into your mother's womb. I'm telling you that on a high level, Nicodemus, because you are a man of high level authority, let me speak to you in your language. It's not about being saved. You're saved by faith. You're justified by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to talk to you about this because that wasn't his question. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evident that God is with you. Listen to how Nicodemus talks. He doesn't ask him how to be saved. He doesn't ask him how to be saved. He says, wait a minute. I know God is with you, Rabbi. <laughs> and then he says to him, you want to see this kingdom? And you have to be born of the spirit. The water is the spirit. It's the same water that was in the well in John 4 when Jesus said, if I give you this water, you'll never thirst again. That water is the Holy Spirit. 
John 7. He said, if you believe upon me, as the scriptures have said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And he spoke of the Holy Spirit. It's not possible for us. It's not possible for us to be born again and be stagnant. The wind is blowing. The invisible is moving the visible. Good God Almighty. Oh my God. Oh, you cannot. You cannot be stagnant. So I don't know why some of y'all are in these stagnant churches. You just insist on being there because it's comfortable. That is outdated. That's why God has me here now, almost two years, just teaching every day. So you can get some fresh water. So you can eat some fresh manna. This is why. Because God is after you. He wants you in this wind. He wants you moving by his spirit. He wants you to keep up with everything that he is doing. He wants you to be engaged and to be involved. And so there are sacrifices, there are investments. If you're going to make a shift, it's going to cost you some money. If you're going to make the shift, it's going to cost you some time. If you're going to make the shift, it's going to cost you some investment. You got to get some skin in the game. Listen to me. The invisible is moving the visible. Woo, shakaba. <laughs> and revelation makes you the exception to the rule. When the Lord spoke to me about starting a worship team, there was no worship team in Detroit. When the Holy Spirit spoke to me, I saw it someplace in the spirit. We went all over. We went all the way to Denver, Colorado, to Tommy Barnett's church. Went all the way there and we went to their worship conference. I, and I bought all the music and we, we brought it back and we taught it. Some days we would start it on a Saturday at nine in the morning. We would leave at five. We had to learn how to read that music. We had to learn that music. Now we want to do rehearsal in an hour. No, you're not going to keep serving no old food. You're not going to keep warming up stuff. No, I want an investment of your time. I want you to put some skin in the game. Said it to my preachers. Said it to my elders. Y'all like y'all don't have no skin in the game. I want some investment in time. I want some investment in your teaching. I want to hear fresh revelation. Whew. Ooh, is anybody hearing me? Listen, listen. <laughs> Hallelujah! Because the wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing and just like the wind blows and you cannot tell where it comes from and you cannot tell where it's going. So it is of the people that are born of the spirit. <laughs> Woo, shakaba. Hallelujah. <laughs> Who am I talking to? It makes us the exception to the rule and it gives us the advantage. There was no, there was no worship team when I started ours. And people came from all over the city to learn it. And we went to Denver. We went all over to grab that music, to grab that freshness. Went down to Texas to Pastor Ivy Hilliard's church to grab that freshness in leadership. I took them to Denver. I took 20-something people. I took 30-something people because I need you to see what I'm seeing and I need you to hear what I'm hearing. I said, now, let's listen to Darling Zach and Hill song. Wow. Woo, it was fresh. Took him to Atlanta. Cathedral of the Holy Spirit. The arts. To see the arts. To see the demonstration of the arts. It was amazing. And those moves, those winds have kept blowing. Now some of them are no longer. And now I say, you got to listen to Maverick City. We got to listen to Casting Crown. We got to listen. Why? Because the wind is blowing. My preaching has to change. Your teaching has to change. Your, son, your singing has to change. Your prayer life has to change. Everything moves in the spirit. Everything moves. 
everything changes, everything shifts. And when it shifts, you don't shift with it. You'll be left out of the wind. Are you hearing me? It's comfortable, but it's outdated. The sound is outdated. The application is outdated. You got to keep up with the spirit. Woo, listen to me very carefully. God, God, I got to go. I don't know where this time goes. I don't know where it goes. But come on, would you allow me to serve you the Lord's table? To seal in what the Lord has been saying to us. Glory to God. That we have the body of the Lord Jesus. And we break it and we eat it together. Because we seal the word in. This is his body. Broken for us. Now, let's eat it together. And then this is the cup. Glory to God. This is the cup. He said, it is my blood. It is my blood. And as often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. We take the cup and we drink it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I remind you that every five days we sow a seed of $5. Every five days we sow a seed of five dollars. What Holy Spirit has offered us today is most amazing. What Holy Spirit has offered us today is amazing. Don't miss this flow in the spirit. Don't miss this. Put your seeds in the ground, if you will. Glory to God. I love y'all so much. Oh my God. Whoa, everything in the spirit has to move. Everything in this, everything that's born of the spirit continues to evolve. That's the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom of godliness. That's the kingdom of God that we're moving, we're shifting. We're staying with the wind. We don't want the whirlwind. We want the wind. Put your seed in the ground. Your $5 seed every five days. There is a $5 seed that I ask you to sow. And you guys are so kind. Some of you mail it. Some of you do it by cash app. If you do it by cash app, go right ahead and put in a ministry seed. That way it's not charged to me. It's charged to the ministry dollar sign Corletta Vaughn. Or you can do Zale bank to bank. It is Corletta Vaughn at gmail.com. I will never approach you on the internet to give any money to me. So if anyone does that, it's not me. These are the ways that you will give to us. PayPal.me forward slash go tell it ministry. PayPal.me forward slash Carletta Vaughn. Or you can go to our website, our beautiful updated website. Go ahead and visit it. Get your shirts, get your books, get your CDs. <laughs> Hey, man, that's www.gotellit.org. Amen. And don't forget, Pentecost Sunday is coming. And there's no greater place for you to be than the Holy Ghost Cathedral. Glory to God. June the 5th from 11 to 7. Doors will open at 10 a.m. Eight hours of pure Pentecost. I love y'all. I got to go. <laughs> Please get your seed in the ground. Amen. And share this on your page. And if you're watching the replay there at YouTube, thank you so much. Go ahead and subscribe and click that notification. We love y'all. Got to go. Woo! Keep up with the wind, folks. <laughs> I love y'all. Hallelujah.